Good morning. I welcome all of you to Sunday morning worship live stream. Today uh, we canceled our Sunday morning worship. However, I prepared uh, the sermon so I want to share with you. Today's scripture comes from Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Before I read the scripture, let us pray for the illumination. Living and loving God, help us to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture lesson comes from Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Here is the word. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief priest, steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had became, become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel of John, there, were, there are seven miracles that Jesus performed. John uses the word sign rather than miracle. The very first sign of Jesus take, takes place at the wedding in Cana, changing water into wine. This is one of the most frequently mentioned yet most neglected stories of Jesus. It's a unique miracle that is only found in John, not in the Synoptic Gospels. Every Christian couple who made it down the aisle, hoping that it would not take long for the ceremony, but their marriage will last forever, has heard about the story at Cana. We have heard many times 
that Jesus changed the water into wine. But we may never have thought about the theological message in this familiar text. What does this gospel begin with a small crisis of hospitality that claims that this narrative of Jesus as a reluctant miracle worker reveals his glory. First and foremost, wine at the wedding of Cana in John means of a blessing. Blessing is manifested in many different forms. Many people define blessings as material possessions, healthy and long life, or having no major concerns for our descendants. However, above all, blessing is God's full presence, overflowing grace, and abundant life. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have a life, and have it abundantly. Abundant life means exceedingly, very highly, beyond measure, more, a quantity so abundant as to be considerably more than what one would expect or anticipate. In short, Jesus promises us a life far better than we could ever imagine. Yes, the life in Jesus is indescribable and beyond our imagination. In Jesus, the wine is restored to the, to the human community by the one through whom all things came into being in Christ. It is the life of this party. Before Jesus came into the world, only God's chosen people, Jews, were saved. But as Jesus changed the water into wine, all peoples in the world would receive blessings. The blessings of building a relationship with God, the Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, new wine in Jesus symbolizes everlasting life. Every year, planes in Paris are placed on alert as a spring wine is rushed from wines vines to market. Lines of people in cities around the world gather to purchase a bottle of this fresh fermenting of a spring. Just like a spring wine, the work of Jesus cannot be kept waiting. Jesus has been working at our churches throughout 200 years, and He will continue to work with us, in us, and with us, through us. We are here not only for ourselves, but for the people in the community. Our church is a community church. What today's scripture lesson teaches us is that there is always something lacking in the world. The world's happiness always runs out and it cannot be regained. But the joy that Jesus gives is new and everlasting. Wine is also the symbol of joy. Psalm 104 verse 15 refers to wine to gladden the human heart. The wine of the world offers the best at first. And then once you are hooked, things start to get worse. We pay the price of the wine of the world. But the new wine in Jesus offers continuous blessings. It is the best until one day we enjoy the finest blessings in the eternal kingdom. 
new wine in Jesus is a tree. He has paid the price. What Jesus had done on the cross was enough. The empty tomb represents God's power. So because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. The more we drink the new wine in Jesus Christ, the more we are full of joy. And we share that joy with the others. More importantly, we do what Jesus tells us to do. The Christ of John's Gospel is the divine revelation, the eternal word, Holy God. This passage provides one of the few intimate insights into a mother and son relationship. Mary asked Jesus to, Jesus to help by saying they have no wine. He hesitated, seemingly refusing. She persisted. The miracle was performed. It is difficult to avoid the temptation to psychoanalyze this text out of context. The meaning of Mary to John's community is difficult to translate into a contemporary Protestant setting. It is clear that Jesus was moved to enact his first sign with his sacramental images with a human celebration. The wine in today's scripture foreshadows the communion wine that symbolized the blood of Christ shed for us. There are many traditions for spiritual formation and corporate discipleship. Each generation of believers has explored ancient methods of prayer and invents new structure of mission. The simplest guide of all can be found in Mary's instruction. Do what he tells you. So Jesus said, fill the jar with the water. How much water did the servant bring to fill the jars up? There were six jars, each containing between 20 and 30 gallons. If the average bottle contains 750 milliliters of wine, that means Jesus created the equivalent of 1,012 bottles of wine. The wine that Jesus made was enough to serve 4,048 adults. Can we imagine the blessing of the wedding? This abundance of wine represents the overflowing grace of God, the unquenchable joy of the Holy Spirit found in Jesus Christ. The point is that, point is that when we do what Jesus wants us to do, there are unlimited blessings upon us. God is much greater than our need. How did they receive this unlimited blessing? Yes, they listened to Jesus. As Jesus told them to fill the jar with the water, they obeyed Jesus. John described the cooperation of people and God in the feeding of 5,000 people in chapter 6, the healing of the man born blind in chapter 9, and the raising of Lazarus in chapter 11. Jesus, who created the whole universe with his Father, uses people of faith 
to do great things. We wait until Jesus calls us and uses us for the glory of God and for the needs of others. There are many ways to wait in line. There is usually only one reason. We want whatever is at the place where the line begins. Charles Wesley wrote hundreds of hymns for the Methodists to sing while they were waiting in life for the coming of Jesus Christ. The early Methodist movement produces a community that transformed their world doing what he told them. They visited the prisoners, opened the schools, fed the hungry, preached the emancipation of slavery and racial, racial equality, prayed unceasingly, and stood in a long lines in order to receive new wine of Jesus. Today, Human Relations Sunday. We thank God for Martin Luther King Jr. and for what he stood up for, human rights. One of the most famous of his sermons is I Have a Dream. The dream has not been accomplished completely today. We are working and waiting in the line of accomplishing his American dream. Individually, we are working and waiting in the line of healing of our sickness or COVID, brokenness, depression, and despair. Also, we are waiting in the line for the building up of an intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And we are waiting in the line of being a vibrant, healthy church for the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. So our eyes are on Jesus to grant us the new wine, which is overflowing with His grace, everlasting blessing, and joy. In our daily lives, we may pray, O oh Lord Jesus, fill my jar up to the brim with the new wine from you. O oh Lord Jesus, fill me up. Fill me. Glory to be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for your word, and we ask you to fill us up with the new wine in Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We have some celebrations and the prayer concerns uh, for the body of Christ. Well, first of all, Brother Clarence Cameron fell and he is waiting for uh, recovery. We give a thanks to God for Pat Cameron uh, who uh, began to walk with her own. We lift up Michelle Williams' mother, Jean Tarleton, uh, has a gallbladder infection. Remember her in your prayers. Also, we lift up Janet Eford had uh, a surgery. Remember her in your prayers. Jimmy Blanchard had a surgery, and uh, he came back home and uh, waiting for full recovery. Continue to remember Andrew Milholland and Jeff and Phyllis Saban, and Trish Harris, Kendall uh, Wills, and Gloria Bauer. And Brother Keith Hathcock had been discharged and waiting for good spirit recovery. Pray for the people those are waiting for full recovery from their surgeries and the sickness. One thing that I can tell you, as I have been doing, as I walk around the church buildings this morning, I lift you up in my prayers this morning. 
So I just to let you know that my prayers are with you always. So my beloved sisters and brothers, on this special day and beautiful day, may God bless you. With the grace of God, you may go forth to welcome the transformation from water into wine. With the compassion of Christ, you may serve those who are in need. And with the serenity of the Spirit, you may share the message of peace among God's people. Today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The people of God say, Amen.